The following is a presentation of TFNN. Let's go to our uh, first call of the day. We'll talk to John in Austin, Texas. How are you doing today, John? Way too good, Ken. I know, um, like a lot of listeners, we thank you so, so much for uh, helping us to earn money in the market. And, and Mr. O'Brien also, and what you all do at TFNN, it is absolutely huge. Appreciate it very much. All the best to you and your family, man. I'm telling you, we so appreciate what you're doing. You do such a great job. This show is fantastic every day. Uh, you're a good man, John. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Live at TFNN, Breakout Investing with your host, Ken Shreve. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to another edition of Breakout Investing on TFNN, 877-927-6648. That is the number to use if you want to uh, call and talk about this market. Uh, my show airs every day now on TFNN from 3 to 4 Eastern. If you can't listen live, you can pick it up as a podcast on iTunes. And don't forget, you can listen to all TFNN programming on your smartphone. All you have to do is open your smartphone browser, type in tfnn.mobi, and you can listen to the stream that way as well. And if you want to look at charts live right along with me on the program, go to Tiger TV on the homepage of tfnn.com, channel 1. The show is carried live, and it is archived in channel 13. Tiger TV is also uh, viewable on your handheld device as well. Let's check in on the major averages here. 50 minutes or so left to go in Tuesday's session. Look at that NASDAQ composite. Comes right down to its 200-day moving average today, which is at 29.71. The tech index right now is trading at 29.99.55. Now, it hit an intraday low of 29.74, about three points above its 200-day moving average. Tech stocks uh, still look vulnerable here. Checking in on the S&P 500. Interesting, we've seen the NASDAQ really lagging in recent weeks. The Dow and the S&P 500 have been holding up, but the rolls have kind of flip-flopped today. The S&P 500 down 16 points right now, 1.1% to 1417, uh, trading underneath its 50-day moving average, and the same for the Dow Jones Industrial Average also lagging uh, by the most today, down 1.6%, uh, 212 points lower to 13,133. 877-927-6648, going to head up to the uh, Bay Area, north of where I am in Los Angeles, talk to Tim. How are you doing today, Tim? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Uh, I'm doing great. Enjoyed the uh, ball game last night. Congratulations uh, to uh, San Francisco. It was, no, it was, oh. it was really cool. One of Unbelievable. Best, one of the best sporting events I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. So what? What's your what's your prediction? Uh, uh, Giants and six. Giants and seven. Giants and seven. Giants and seven. That yeah, way I can go to the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it was fun. It's a good uh, gritty gritty team, and I love the uh, love Bochi, the manager too. Oh yeah, it was great. I mean, we were all got rained on at the end, and it was just special. We were just it was really nice. Yeah, awesome. So, so we're looking at TZA. I'm back in it uh, just right now at fifteen ninety, and just want to know where I should put my stop. Okay, so the TZA, that's the Direction Small Cap Bear Fund. It basically is an inverse ETF that is going to give you three times the inverse return of the Russell 2000. Working on four straight gains today. Hits a high today of 1644, a low of 1583, currently trading around 1590. Um, you know, a stop, you know, it, it, it's back above its 50-day moving average. If you've listened to the show, Tim, a lot, you know I use uh, fi the moving averages a lot. And, uh, you know, to me, the 50-day line here at 1534 is the most logical uh, near-term support level for the TZA. If it, uh, if it doesn't hold that, then you would have, uh, let's see here. If it doesn't hold that, next uh, support would be probably in that 14... 1425 area so it just depends on how much you're how much room you're willing to to give it not very much <laughs> yeah so i would i would i would put it at 15 um uh, yeah 15 and a quarter is that too much no that's that's about right 
Yeah, I'd put it at 15 and a quarter. You you got the 50-day line at 1534. If it undercuts that, you can give it a little bit of room underneath that, but you know, 15 1525 would seem uh, would seem logical to me. Okay, that's great. That's great. Thank you. Uh, all right, go Giants. Hey, yeah, go Giants. All right. All right, take care Tim. Thanks for the call. All right, thanks to Tim in uh, San Francisco. Yeah, so the Direction Small Cap Bear Fund. Um yeah, this is uh, yeah, this is a fund that has been you know all the short plays right now. If you want to go short this market, you can you know look at a, a fund like the SDS. This is not a three times inverse er, inverse fund, but this is the ProShares uh, Ultra Short S and P 500. They all have very similar looks to them. They've been beaten down in price pretty much uh, since June. They're trying to come up the, uh, uh, trying to come up off their their lows here. So I really look at all of these plays right now, whether it's the the, the TZA or the SDS or the the QID, um, really as more short term. Uh, trading vehicles right now, not not something that you can really go long with conviction. I think if you go long and you and you get a couple points, you know, best to to take some money off the uh, the table. And if the market tells you you're wrong, you know, like uh, Tim was doing, just going to set a tight stop and uh, perhaps revisit it at a later date. But uh, you know, it, it would seem to make sense uh, to go short this market. The market is in a downtrend. Uh, Sellers are clearly in control here, uh, but then again, you never know what Apple's going to say on Thursday after the close when it reports earnings. If it's a blowout number and all of a sudden, you know, sentiment improves around uh, tech, we could get a, you know, a big rally on on Friday, perhaps even, you know, some follow through in the market, and then all of a sudden that that bearish. Uh, uh, bearish position on the market is going to be kind of uh, unnerving to to still hold. So uh, I'm not really keen myself on owning a short ETF right now. I'm sitting mostly in in cash with my Ultimate Growth Stocks model portfolio. I'm just kind of sitting uh, sitting on the sidelines. And again, most of that has to do when I look at all the short ETFs out there. My expertise is not buying stocks when they're so far off highs and coming off lows like this. Uh, I tend to to you know to buy price strength in the market and a lot of these short. ETFs are starting just in the very early stages of, of starting to show relative price strength, uh, but it's not clear to me that they're uh, ready to start bona fide uh, uptrends here. So uh, that's my general general take on things. Uh, volume today pretty heavy in the major averages. Uh, last check volume on the New York Stock Exchange was uh, tracking uh, about what 10 to 15 percent higher than what we saw Monday. Uh, volume Monday was a tad below average at 627 million shares. So today, tracking about 10 to 15 percent higher than that. Nasdaq volume about 10 percent higher than what we saw Friday. Uh, and that was uh, average volume at just over 1.6 billion shares. So uh, volume on both ex exchanges tracking uh, higher than what we saw. Uh, yesterday, and uh, it's interesting when you look at the Nasdaq Composite. Let's take a look. Uh, switch back to the Nasdaq Composite here, and it has only fallen about seven percent off its recent high of 31.97. That was set back in early September. 200-day uh, moving average again at 29.71. That marked a pullback of about 7% off its recent high. S&P 500 hits a recent high of 1474, and it also pulled back by about the same amount, about a 7% pullback so far for the S&P 500. So it feels worse than that, but in the grand scheme of things, uh, not an uh, you know overwhelming, unsettling type of uh, pullback here. Um, so the S&P 500, actually, it has not corrected 7% off its recent high. The S&P 500's recent high of 1474, a pullback down to its 200-day moving average to 1375 would be a pullback of 7%, but it recently just undercut its 50-day moving average. Uh, so, you know, its pullback has been probably about 4 or 5% off, uh, off its recent high. So uh, take a look at shares of Apple, AAPL, of course, the... Long-awaited press event started uh, today at one o'clock Eastern. A lot of news came from Apple. You can see the stock really isn't responding at all. It's down a little over fifteen bucks, two point four percent, to six eighteen seventy-five, trading near its session low after hitting a session high of six thirty-three ninety. Uh, Apple 
announced a uh, revamp of its MacBook Pro, a new ultra-thin iMac with uh, a choice of either a 21 and a half inch screen or a 27 inch screen, a line of revamped uh, Mac computers that will ship in December, and they also updated their iPad tablet with a faster chip, and finally the long-awaited iPad mini was introduced with a 7.9 inch screen priced at $329. Investors kind of shrugging off the news today. Apple does report earnings uh, Thursday after the close. Let's um, give you a different look at Apple here. And we'll see that the stock right now really looks like it's in some trouble here. It uh, plunged below its 100-day moving average Friday, rallied back above the line yesterday in light volume, and now it is back below its 100-day moving average today. Which, uh, you know, certainly that 583 level, which is its 200 day moving average, looks to be in play. Uh, does Apple go higher from here or lower? All I can say is that its technical picture does not look good right now. Taking a position ahead of earnings would be fraught with risk. Best to wait to hear what the company has to say Thursday. Uh, many are expecting a, a big quarter. Uh, earnings are expected to come in at $8.85 a share up 26% from a year ago with sales up 28% to $36.2 billion. Uh, Dow Jones Industrial Averages uh, lagging pretty badly today, mostly hurt by some weak earnings in the industrial space. Let's take a look at 3M. MMM is the uh, ticker symbol here. See a big gap down for shares of 3M today, down 4.2% to 88.62, still holding barely above its 200-day moving average at 88.14. The diversified U.S. manufacturing company earned $1.65 a share, up 9% from a year ago, but sales were flat at $7.5 billion. The company cut its profit forecast for the uh, full year. Also, DuPont... DD is the ticker symbol here. Big gap down. Very bearish price action, not only in 3M, but also DuPont today. Down 9.1%, a very big decline for shares of DuPont. Last trading at 45.23. Earnings fell 47% from a year ago to $0.32 cents a share. Sales down 12% to $7.3 billion. The company announced 15,000 job cuts to offset sluggish sales around the world. And finally, UTX, uh, some sellers in this stock today, but not nearly as bad as 3M and DuPont. Shares of United Technologies down 37 cents today to 77.46. It is uh, trading in the middle half of its trading range after early weakness. The company cut its sales forecast for the year, citing weak demand from airlines and the overall uncertain economy. Sales in the quarter were up 6% to 15 billion. Earnings down 6% to $1.37 a share. According to Thomson Reuters data, out of the 123 S&P 500 firms that have reported earnings through uh, Monday morning, 60% have topped analyst expectations below the 67% average over the past four quarters. I have some data from FactSet, too, about sales so far in the third quarter. Uh, kind of disappointing. We'll talk about that when we come back. You're listening to Breakout Investing on TFNN. We'll be right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Carol Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. 
you take a hands-on approach to managing your investments. And whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Breakout Investing. So according to Thomson Reuters, about 60% of S&P 500 firms that have reported uh, through Monday morning, 60% have topped analyst expectations. That's a little uh, below the 67% average over the past four quarters. Uh, FactSet also came out with some data today. Uh, earnings season so far shows the lowest percentage of S&P 500 firms beating sales estimates since the first quarter of 2009. Only 42% of companies have reported sales above estimates well below the average of 55% recorded over the past four quarters. So, you know, a lot of people are saying, well, why is the market falling like it is? What are the reasons? And there are a variety of reasons, but I think the main one is that, uh, listen, expectations for third quarter earnings season were not very high. Okay, so we, we knew that earnings were, it was going to be a soft uh, quarter. There were going to be few, there were going to be a few bright spots, but generally tech was going to be weak. And uh, But, you know, the results have been much worse than the market was expecting. I think that's pretty clear. I don't think anybody uh, had any idea that IBM was going to miss their revenue number by $1 billion. And I don't think anybody had any idea that Google was going to report the numbers uh, that it did. There have been a lot of earnings uh, disasters over the past uh, couple of weeks, so uh, the market is uh, is pricing that in. Again, the S and P, uh, the, excuse me, the Nasdaq Composite is only about seven percent off its recent high. So once you get to a ten percent correction, you're talking about an in intermediate term correction. 
the twenty percent, you know, that that's generally regarded as bull market or <laughs> bear market territory. But um, you know, right now there's definitely some headwinds out there. Uh, so not only do you have weak earnings, but you've got you know a slew of other concerns here that the market you know could be worrying about. Uh, weak job growth in the in the U.S. Uh, sluggish GDP. Um, is another shoe going to drop over in Europe? Uh, you know the the worry headlines are you know nonstop in this market, but right now it's it's about earnings season, and you know when you look at the uh, price destruction in 3M today, uh, Dupont. There's just been a lot of a lot of damage done over the past uh, few weeks, not only to you know blue chip large cap stocks, but to market leading stocks, which tells me the market's probably ready ready to rest here and consolidate gains. So it's certainly not an environment during a, a, a market downtrend where I'm interested in putting money to, to work. I have a, a cash position of about 80% right now in the ultimate growth stocks model portfolio, have been you know, taking uh, money off the, the table in recent weeks and uh, felt comfortable uh, doing it due to increasing signs of distribution in the uh, major averages. Uh, distribution is still out there, and this uh, pullback is probably going to take a little while to uh, run its course. But at this point, we're really just looking for day one of a new rally attempt for the major averages. And then four days after that first day of a rally attempt, might be four days, five days, six days after. Uh, if you get some follow through, that might be the market's way of telling us that a new uptrend um, is ready to start. It could be a tradable, short term tradable rally. It could be a bigger rally. So I'm just going to let price and volume be my guide from here on out. If you want to check out 30 days free of ultimate growth stocks, you can do that right on the homepage of TFNN.com. Just click on the Newsletters tab right on the home page and then click on Investment Newsletters. Uh, you'll also see Ultimate Growth Stocks in the Breaking News section uh, on the home page as well. So check out 30 Days uh, Freight, see how I uh, go about covering the market. Let's talk about some bright spots in the market uh, today. A lot of, uh, lot of stocks acting weak out there, but Whirlpool had an earnings report that investors like quite a bit. The earnings were up 521% from a year ago to $1.80 a share. That was 20 cents above the consensus estimate. Sales uh, were a little light, down 3% to $4.5 billion, but you can see a big bullish move for Whirlpool today, up 8.2% to 93.40. Star of the day would have to be Arm Holdings, and I like this one better than Whirlpool just because of how the company's uh, positioned. It still looks to me like it could be in the early stages of a move here as well. Arm Holdings up 11.2% today to 31.27. hits an intraday high of 31.89. I think I have a weekly chart for Arm Holdings. There it is. When I say this stock could still be in the early stages of a move here, you can see this big, long base that the, uh, that the stock has been uh, forming for several months, and it really is in the process of breaking out of this lengthy consolidation. Now, Arm is well-positioned for growth. That's the one thing this company has going for it. They, uh, the company licenses its microprocessor designs to several large-cap tech names, uh, including Apple. Uh, Arm has a big presence in the smartphone and tablet device markets, and um, bullish move today for the stock, and strong earnings as well. Earnings up 29% to $0.18 cents a share. Sales up 24% to 233.5 million. We'll be right back, folks. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. 
If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. TFNN and Great Panther Silver have teamed up for another exciting silver giveaway. The Great Panther Silver Halloween giveaway will be taking place at the end of October, and for three full days, we'll be giving away silver coins and bars every hour from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. to one lucky winner randomly chosen. There's no purchase necessary. For more information and to fill out your registration form today, simply visit the front page of TFNN.com where you'll find all the details. October 29th, 30th, and 31st, we'll choose one lucky winner that will receive a silver coin or bar courtesy of Great Panther Silver. Winners will be announced live on the air each hour for three full days. Don't miss out on this great opportunity to win free silver from TFNN and Great Panther Silver. Register today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and for more information on Great Panther Silver, you can click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE Amex, symbol GPL, or on the Toronto Stock Exchange, symbol GPR. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by Direction Shares. To learn more about technical tools for the sophisticated active investor, hit the Direction Shares banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Breakout Investing on TFNN. Ken Shreve with you, 877-927-6648. Talked about a couple of nice winners in the market today in a down tape whirlpool with uh, nice earnings and also Arm Holdings, a chip designer that is well positioned in the smartphone and tablet market. Uh, Coach as well. Let's take a look at Coach up 7.7 percent today to 58.34. Uh, still a stock that has been beaten down far off its 52-week high, but uh, definitely shares under accumulation today. Coach reported profit of $0.77 cents a share, up 5% from a year ago. Sales up 11% to $1.16 billion. Same store sales in North America up 5.5%. And uh, the company continues to do well in China. So there was a lot of, you know, judging by its recent price action, clearly a lot of uh, uh, concerns about uh, not only growth in the U.S., but uh, growth internationally as well. But it was generally a pretty bullish earnings call today from Coach, and stock is up 7.7% uh, on the news. Let's take a look at uh, Wabtech, W-A-B. And we'll see that this stock came down to its 50-day moving average today, trading up near its session high now, but still down a little over 1% to 83.18. Earnings today from Wab Tech pretty decent. Earnings up 35% to $1.30 a share. Sales were up 18% from a year ago to just over 
587 million. Company makes equipment for locomotives, freight cars, passenger transit vehicles, uh, but a chart that uh, you know still looking pretty good in this market support at the 50-day moving average uh, so far. So shares of Wabtec not doing too badly today. Checking in on uh, crude oil, December oil uh, down a dollar ninety-eight to eighty-six sixty-seven a barrel. Uh, refiners under pressure today. Let's take a look at CVI, a company called CVR Energy. Uh, big price run for this stock in recent months, but uh, look at this coming right down to its 50-day moving average. Will it find support? 50-day line is at 34.79. Stock right now trading at 35.95. So CVR Energy and Oil Refiner under pressure today, and also DK. This is Delic U.S. Holdings, another refiner. Delic got not so lucky here. Has uh, you know broke below its. 50-day moving average last week. It has been under pressure for three days in a row. A big decline for the stock today, down 5.9% to 2309. Frankly, a lot of stock charts in the market look like Delix right now. Uh, stocks look like they're ready to uh, consolidate, build new bases. Question is, how far will the pullback uh, come? After big runs like this, it's not uncommon to see a stock correct 15, 20, 25 percent off a uh, recent high, and then once they do, if the selling in the broad market isn't intense and we don't head into full-blown correction territory, uh, sometimes you get a 25% pullback uh, and then stocks bottom and they round out the bottom of their base and start moving higher again. So at this point, it's just uh, you know identifying stocks that are holding up the best, stocks that pulled back the least from their recent high, and uh, which ones are going to build the best bases going forward. So that's, uh, that's what I'm going to do going forward with my Ultimate Growth Stocks newsletter, keep people abreast of uh, potential leadership, recognizing that old leaders during the past uh, several months may not lead going forward. For example, you know, a, a stock like uh, Apple. You know, we went over Apple and everybody's talking about Apple, but you know, what people aren't talking about with this stock is that it is a late stage base no matter how you cut it. I mean, stocks getting killed again today down 18 bucks, almost 3% to 615.93, pretty much trading at its uh, session low, but when you look, I think I have a chart here of Apple. When you look at a um, a longer term uh, perspective for Apple, and that's not a longer term perspective. This is just the 50, 100, and 200 day moving average. But, uh, you know, why don't I, I'm going to pull up a weekly chart of uh, another stock here, and then we'll switch it over to Apple. When you look at a weekly chart for Apple, it's pretty clear to see a late stage base. In other words, a stock that has made a tremendous price move already. You know, the uh, the people that are long Apple, and you know, it's one thing if you're in this stock at you know 50 bucks, 100 bucks a share, you want to sit through a, a little pullback. You know, you have the c the cushion to do it. But if you're in the stock at you know 625, 6. 50 and it's a relatively new position. Uh, this is you know, this is a risky play right here. Not only you know because it's reporting earnings Thursday after the close, but the fact that it's potentially a late stage base. And a late stage base basically means that you know a stock forms a series of bases during an uptrend. And in Apple's case, you're probably you know over the past two three years you're looking at a a fifth, maybe even a sixth stage base here, which means that to me, I think a good argument can be made that the big money has already been made uh, in this stock. So again, I recently took profits in Apple around 665, 667, something like that, took some nice gains. And, you know, we'll watch and see, we'll watch and see first what earnings look like on Thursday. And, you know, we'll also see if it can hold this 590 level. It may not get down that far, but if it does and start working, it starts working its way higher again, you could have another base breakout take shape uh, into, into the end of the year. Uh, the holiday season is expected to be huge for Apple. Uh, but, you know, breakouts from late stage bases are um, are prone to, to failure. Taking a look at gold today, December gold bullion finished at $1,709.40 an ounce, down $16.90. Here's a look at the GLD, finally breaks through its 50-day moving average today, down 1.3% to 165.42. Checking in on the SLV. This is the iShares Silver Trust. It also 
recently gave up its 50-day moving average. Uh, first did so on Friday, tried to rally back yesterday, down another 2.4% today to 30.64. Support for the SLV looks to be in that $30 area, right where its 200-day moving average is. Haven't looked at the VIX today. Let's take a look at the VIX. Sure, we'll see a wild, uh, wild day for the VIX. Not too bad. Does. Uh, move above its 200 day moving average i thought an area i thought could be resistance but you know moving averages with the vix is, is kind of tough cuz this is it's so volatile it could just take out you know support levels resistance levels at the blink of an eye so VIX, uh, the VIX did move over its 200-day moving average today. It is trading near its session low at 1866, up 12.3 percent on the day, uh, but well off its intraday high of 1965. Uh, other headlines today. Let's take a look at shares of uh, Target (TGT) on the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, Target is going to sell its entire consumer credit card business to TD Bank Group, Toronto Dominion. The sale price will be equivalent to the gross value of the outstanding receivables at the time of the closing. Uh, so we don't know what the price will be yet, but the portfolio currently has a gross value of about 5.9 billion. Target, another base building stock here, still underneath its 50-day moving average, uh, could start to build the right side of that base. Uh, if it does, uh, you know, we keep an eye on it. But uh, shares of Target right now bucking the market trend up 42 cents to 62.63. Sixty Meant to talk about shares of uh, Monster Beverage yesterday. According to incident reports uh, recently re released by the Food and Drug Administration, five people have died in recent years after drinking Monster Energy, a popular energy drink that's highly caffeinated. Uh, the stock has been under tremendous selling pressure, not only yesterday, but also today, down another 10.7% to 4084. Uh, you know, obviously a stock I would not be uh, touching here. Uh, people say, well, maybe you know, Coca-Cola was interested in this uh, company before. Uh, maybe they're going to be interested in it at a much lower price. I highly doubt that. Looks like there's going to be a lot of uh, legal hurdles for Monster to, uh, you know, to uh, overcome in in coming months. I think it's going to be a difficult case to to prove in the courtroom that highly caffeinated uh, beverages cause, uh, you know, can cause deaths. I suppose it's possible, but. Uh, We'll see terrible stories about the people that uh, that died, but um, you know we'll see we'll see what the what the court process looks like with Monster uh, Energy. Taking a look at Facebook, uh, Facebook reports earnings after the close today. How about that? Talk about a company that's going to be held to a high standard. Uh, Facebook has been beaten down mercilessly in price uh, since its IPO earlier this year. It is up 12 cents today to 1944, but off its intraday high of 1980. Uh, earnings at Facebook are expected to be flat from a year ago. 11 cents a share is the consensus estimate. Sales up 29% to 1.23 billion. Issue with Facebook is you've got several quarters in a row of decelerating sales growth when you're a high multiple stock like Facebook is, despite a big price decline over the past uh, several months, still selling at around 68 times trailing earnings, 32 times forward earnings. Uh, next year, in 2013, annual earnings are expected to rise 29%, so its forward P.E. isn't completely unreasonable, but still a company that faces a lot of uh, challenges ahead in terms of how it's going to uh, monetize their mobile strategy. Um, also after the close today, FBHS. This is a stock that had been holding up pretty well under some selling pressure the past two days, but one of the few growth names out there that's still holding above its 50-day moving average, so it deserves credit for that. Fortune Brands Home and Security, uh, as its name would indicate, this company was spun off by Fortune Brands about one year ago, October 2011. The company provides home security, kitchen and bath, and tool storage products for the home building uh, market. Some of its brands include Master Lock and Moen Faucets. Earnings should be up 32% from a year ago to $0.25 cents a share. Sales up 6% to $899.6 million. Talking about uh, vulnerable growth stocks here. How about Alexian Pharmaceuticals? Another example of a late-stage base and... 
it's a stock that's clearly vulnerable here. Down four straight days in pretty heavy volume. They report earnings before the open Wednesday. Uh, should see another strong quarter of uh, growth from a company whose key drug is Soliris, which is used to treat a uh, rare uh, blood uh, rare blood disorder. Uh, earnings up 27% to $0.47 cents a share. Sales up 44% to $293.2 million. But uh, Alexian looking quite vulnerable here ahead of earnings. Uh, Lumber Liquidators, LL. This has been a, a big strong performer. Acting pretty well here, still holding its 50-day moving average. It comes out with earnings Wednesday before the open as well. They are a hardwood flooring retailer that continues to execute nicely. Its chart is um, uh, you know, it's just a, it's still a, a good-looking chart in a down market. Uh, earnings here are expected to be up 36 percent to 34 cents a share. Sales up 10 percent to 189.7 million. Also had good news today from Yahoo. Yahoo, after the close Monday, uh, reported results that were were pretty good. And look at this uh, thing go today, up six percent to sixteen seventy two. Uh, bullish technical breakout for Yahoo. Certainly haven't seen a lot of these lately. But uh, earnings, they beat the consensus estimate by nine cents with profit of thirty five cents a share, up sixty seven percent. Sales were down one percent to one point two billion, but uh, that was a little better than. Ex expected. Display revenue, advertising excluding traffic and acquisition costs was flat at $452 million, uh, but non-GAAP search ad revenue rose 11% to $414 million. CEO Marissa Meyer said her top priority is a focused, coherent mobile strategy. And uh, we'll see what happens. This is another company that's got a lot of uh, challenges, but some think that uh, Marissa Mayer, formerly of Google, is up to the task here. Texas Instruments as well, TXN. Chip stocks really have been in uh, you know, tough shape for some time now. Texas Instruments uh, still a broken stock here, technically uh, up a penny today to 2780 uh, earnings here were down 13% from a year ago sales were down 2% to 3.4 billion uh, big selling in shares of western digital as well today so it's really all about uh, earnings as you can see a lot of uh, companies reporting earnings western digital the, the quarter was super strong i mean the earnings were up 115% sales were up 50% to just over 4 billion but you can see how the stock has traded since august in a unequivocal downtrend here as the market is most likely pricing in slower growth ahead mostly due to a sluggish PC uh, market so that's uh, that's pretty much it on the uh, earnings front um, BEAV uh, BE Aerospace uh, another name we can talk about here uh, green on the day up 69 cents 1.6 percent to 44.23 well off its intraday high of uh, 45.57 this is a company that makes uh, aircraft cabin interior products uh, sales were up 21 percent to 776.7 million sales at its commercial aircraft segment rose almost 16 percent to 385.6 million at its business jet segment sales were up 33 percent to 85.3 million uh, pretty good guidance from uh, BE Aerospace as well. And before we head into the last break, take a look at Harley Davidson. Uh, big day for Harley Davidson, up 7.5% to 46.79. Nice little breakout from deep inside a base for HOG on decent earnings. We'll be right back, folks. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization 
optimization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air, and you've seen him on Tiger TV as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor, and now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m., and provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to check out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, founder and CEO of TFNN, professional trader and educator, also a special guest on CNBC, analyzing the commodity markets. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Welcome back, everyone, to Breakout Investing on TFNN. Quick check on the markets here as we head into the close. We have the Dow still underperforming, uh, down 236 points to 13,109. S&P 500 next under some selling pressure, down 20 points, 1.4% 1 to 1413. And the NASDAQ underneath that psychological 3,000 level, down 25 points, 8 tenths of a percent to 2,991. Looks like a close near session lows for Apple as the stock sellers continue to come into the stock down twenty dollars and sixty one cents, three and a quarter percent to six thirteen forty two, right at its session low. Uh, the fact that it is below its one hundred day moving average now certainly brings the possibility of a trip to its two hundred day moving average at five eighty three into play. 
Haven't had much in the way of economic data uh, this week, but it will start tomorrow with the release of new home sales for September. Amazing how well the home builders continue to uh, hold up here. Here's a look at the iShares Dow Jones U.S. Home Construction Index Fund, still trading comfortably above its 50-day moving average, and it is trading near its high today as well after early weakness down 22 cents to 2058. So uh, tomorrow, new home sales for September. Also, the two-day Fed meeting ends. It started today. It will end tomorrow. I believe a decision on interest rates will be out as normal, 2.15 p.m. Eastern. On Thursday, weekly jobless claims, and on Friday, the first look at third quarter gross domestic product expected to come in at 1.9% growth after 1.3% growth in the second quarter. Coming up after the close, earnings, earnings, and more earnings. Netflix will be out after the close. Let's check in on Netflix. Bucking the market trend up 25 cents to 68.13. 68.13, the last price for Netflix. Uh, four cents a share is what's expected here. That would be down 97% from a year ago. Sales up 10% to 904.9 million. We'll also hear from Amgen after the close. Let's check in uh, at this strong performing pharmaceutical, still holding above its 50-day moving average, virtually unchanged on the day, down $0.08 cents to 87.72, so still acting very well ahead of earnings. How about a couple of restaurant stocks? Buffalo Wild Wings, still seeing good growth at Buffalo Wild Wings, uh, trading down close to support here. Up a penny today to 83.47. Uh, earnings expected to fall 2% from a year ago to 60 cents a share, but top line growth still there. Uh, expected to uh, be up 29% uh, sales. Sales growth of 29% up. Um, let me say that again. Sales at Buffalo Wild Wings should be up 29% to 254 uh, million. We'll also hear from Panera Bread, P-N-R-A. Recently took profits in Panera Bread. It's just very difficult when you don't have a, a big, big cushion in a stock. Um, it's just dangerous uh, holding through earnings, so I decided to take uh, a short-term profit in Panera Bread. Stock has been under quite a bit of pressure over the past three days, down another dollar. Dollar thirty-five today to one sixty thirty-six, still holding above its two hundred day moving average around one fifty-five earnings at Panera. Uh, this is a company that probably one of the best run restaurants out there, but when selling pressure starts to build in a stock, you gotta you have to respect it. Uh, Panera up twenty-three percent uh, earnings to a dollar nineteen a share. Sales up 15% to 522.5 million. Tomorrow before the open, AT&T, Boeing, Eli Lilly, IAC Interactive Core, and Regeneron Pharmaceuticals, REGN. That stock's under a lot of pressure today, ahead of earnings, down about 5.8% to 153.57. Still holding above its 50-day moving average. Coming up next, the Tom O'Brien Show. I'll see you back here tomorrow, folks, with another edition of Breakout Investing, 3 o'clock Eastern.